Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance and in this presentation we're going to be covering how to improve mobility and then we're going to talk about that in terms of number one developing range of motion and then number two increasing our movement proficiency. So first we need to understand what mobility is, what we're actually talking about because there's a lot of um, words thrown around about mobility and they all sort of mean uh, different things so we're going to start with what uh, talking about what we mean by mobility. So essentially we're talking about controlling or um, moving through a given range through a given range of the joints and that's going to be specific to the sport um, or the movement that you're doing. So if you have good mobility doing uh, one exercise does not necessarily mean you have uh, good mobility doing another exercise. Essentially mobility um, compromises of number one uh, the range of motion of the joint so can the joint actually move in that range that's going to be influenced by um, the, the joint structure and then also limitations from the uh, from the tissue so the muscles and tendons and ligaments and things like that and the other component of uh, mobility is going to be uh, the the skill so can you actually perform the movement and that's going to be probably a bigger part than you think so before we actually get into how to improve mobility, let's talk about the importance of mobility. So essentially, as we mentioned, mobility is specific to the movement or sport that you're doing. So for example, a snatch versus uh, sprinting, both of them require mobility in different ways. Um, and because you have good mobility in one of those, in a snatch does not necessarily mean you can, um, you have good mobility in sprinting. So you probably don't need to actually improve mobility if you can already perform um, the given movement adequately and you can control that range but if you cannot control that range or cannot even get into that range then you probably need to improve your mobility so for example in this uh, uh, picture of a sprinter you can see we have one leg that's fully extended, the ankle, knee, and the hip, while the other one's basically uh, flexed at the ankle, knee, and hip. So that that mo that sort of position is different to something like we had in this picture of the snatch, where this is complete flexion of both hips and sitting into an overhead squat. So how do we improve mobility? Um, essentially, we need to make sure we're checking off the two components we talked about before. So number one, um, we can screen our passive ranges of motion in order to um, tick that off the list. So can your joints actually move into the ranges required? So if we get someone lying down on a bed and they can basically bring their knee all the way up to their chest, their hips can go into deep flexion, then the hips don't have an issue um, in something like a deep squat or a deep clean or deep snatch um, it's because it, if, if they can't achieve that position but their joints can move then the issue is not um, the issue is not range of motion it's movement so the other thing there is we can correct movement patterns which is probably more important because most people probably can get their joints into the into the necessary range of their movement so essentially when we're correcting movement patterns, we're going to get into more detail, but essentially you want to start with slow and more stable movements so your body actually can um, adapt and realize the safety of those positions and then progress to faster or more specific movements. So before we get into the movement stuff, if your joint can't actually get into the range of motion, we need to fix that first and foremost, and that's probably something for a, um, a practitioner to actually deal with but the first thing is some quick things we can do just to tick things off is number one is to fix your trunk position so let's take this example of let's of hip flexion so we need that knee to go right up here and that hip to get into deep flexion um, if you can't do that first and foremost fix your trunk position so make sure you bring your ribs down um, if your pelvis is is anteriorly tilted make sure you bring it posterior posteriorly tilted into a neutral position and then try the the movement again and um, a lot of the time you'll find you actually get more range of motion 
just by fixing your trunk position. Also, you can try um, these breathing drills by uh, Dr. Quinn Hennock is a big uh, proponent of. So you can just uh, search that on YouTube, Dr. Quinn Hennock um, breathing drills or something like that. And there's a lot of good breathing drills which basically get your trunk into a proper position, get your core working, and a lot of the time that really significantly impacts your range of motion. The other thing you can do is things like self-massage, which aren't actually, um, they're not actually changing the, the tissues, but what they're doing is they're sending a, um, a signal to the nervous system to basically reduce tone, which is basically the resting um, tension of the muscle. So if you use something like self-massage, um, then you can make sure you load that new range of motion after you do the self-massage. So you can do some sort of foam rolling on the shoulders or the hips or somewhere around there. Make sure you, um, so let's say for example in the hips to get into deeper hip flexion, what you can do after you do that self-massage, you can do like deep squats, for example, with some sort of load in order to actually teach your body to move in that position. Otherwise, your body will not hold on to that new range of motion. The last thing you can do is uh, eccentric overload training um, in certain positions because that's been shown pretty interestingly to actually increase the fascicle length of the, uh, of the muscle fibers. So you can actually lengthen the muscle by doing eccentric overload training. And in terms of uh, movement pattern corrections, the main thing we can do is just practice. If our joints can get into that range, but we still can't hit these proper positions that we're after, you need to practice. You need to actually spend time in those in loaded positions in order for your nervous system to actually um, adapt and be comfortable in those positions. Otherwise, um, you'll never be comfortably in there. So, and also make sure when we're doing these fundamental movements, we have a braced trunk, because remember that can influence our uh, range of motion. So we need to brace our trunk and we need to allow the movement um, and the work to come from the hips and the shoulders primarily, because they're gonna be the real powerhouse that's gonna produce all the movement and produce large forces. So in this, Example here, for example, of a jerk. Um, we want that nice rigid trunk, which could probably be better um, in this picture of me. And then we get the hips to actually to be the ones that are moving in the shoulders while that trunk stays um, braced. And that's going to allow um, basically your joints to actually move more freely. So that's it for this presentation, guys. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of it. Um, you can follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe on YouTube for the, to stay up to date with the latest informative content. So on social media, so on Facebook and on Instagram, you can find these uh, research infographics, which are essentially the latest research in sports performance training and are summarized into these easy to understand pictures so that you can stay up to date with the latest research without actually having to go into the journals themselves and reading the papers. This gives you a nice brief overview and it uh, delivers the message quickly and effectively. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you got something out of this video.